Hello and welcome to another online class with Shiro Kashi Aikido. In today's class, we'll be looking at the first five of the Jo Saburi, the Ski Nobu. Before we move straight into Chokutsuki, let's look at the starting position called Jo no Kamai. In Jo no Kamai, you start with your feet approximately shoulder width apart. You'll turn your left foot 90 degrees until you're in a similar stance to Ken Kamai. You hold the Joe vertically in your left hand in front of your toes with about two centimeter gap. Hold the Joe about a third of the way down. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail with the body. Joe is vertical. We pull our right shoulder and right hip back as though we're trying to be in line with the Joe and hide behind it. If you look at the left hand, it's about a third of the way down. Don't hold it at the top, this is incorrect. And also don't slide your hand down towards the middle of the Joe, you won't be able to hold it correctly. The first part of the move requires you to raise the Joe into Ski no Kamai. To do so, you bend your knees and stretch your right hand forward underneath your left hand. Don't lean forward, just lower yourself and stretch the arm. You can also raise the Joe with your left hand slightly and pull it back until it's horizontal and above your hip. So underneath the hand, raise it horizontal to your hip, and then we make a forward thrust to the center of the body. So you'll see that as we make the thrust, raise horizontal, and then we make a body movement forward, front foot, then back foot. And we finish with the ski horizontal. You'll also see that the left arm is extended. The right hand, there's a gap between it and your body. Don't stick your elbow out this way and don't tuck it into your side either so that your wrist is bent. Don't bring the jaw in tight to your stomach and don't overextend as you finish your thrust. And certainly don't lean. When you finish, your right hand should be just past your side. You can see clearly there. Your weight should be evenly balanced between both legs. Don't lean into the back right leg. Don't lean forward into your left leg. Nice, evenly balanced. We've got a nice, stable, strong posture at the end. If we look at the left arm, that's the front arm that's stretching out, the hand should be in the centre of the jaw, so that you can quite easily just turn it around the centre like a propeller. It becomes very light and easy to move. Okay, so there. But if you bring your hand back, if your back hand is too close to your body, all the weight in the front of the jaw and it will just turn and it will be very heavy to move. Aim to get your left hand in the centre of the jaw at the end of all of your thrusts. This makes it much easier when performing blocks and other moves that we'll be doing later on. As you can see, there are many points that you have to keep in mind when practicing Saburi. So train slowly and diligently. Be mindful of the points that you're trying to replicate in your moves. Do them over and over again at your own pace. Don't try to move too quickly. Speed will come with time and practice. A common error when loading up is to draw the, the jaw right back behind the body. This is incorrect. Draw the jaw up, level with the hip, move the body forward to make the thrust. As an exercise, you can see if you're drawing the jaw backwards by putting your right foot against the wall. If you load up and as you move forward, you start to hit the wall, you know that you're drawing backwards. So you can practice with your load up, carefully onto your hip and then moving forward to make the thrust. If you can put all of these points into your body with time and training, you'll have a nice, smooth, strong Chokutsuki.
The second Saburi, Kaishitsuki, or Geishitsuki, starts in the same posture, Jo no Kamai. But this time, instead of reaching under the hand to grab the Jo, we slide up to the top and then turn the thumb over, draw the Jo back. And as we do so, we soften the hips and turn sideways and allow the thrust to go through. You'll see that when we perform these skis, the front foot changes angle from the Ken Kamai into a Ski Kamai. So the hips become level with the Jo on the same plane. You're not twisting your body. As we move into the load up position, it's important that the Joe doesn't turn over in a circle. So we can see it here with it facing the camera, the Joe goes off to the side and then back in again. This is bad form. Just pull the Joe back on a straight line onto your hip so you can make the thrust. When performing Saburi thrusts, the Joe should move in as straight a line as possible. And it may be necessary for the body to move slightly off line to get behind the Joe and make space. So imagine the Joe on one plane, it follows it through to make the thrust. I'm moving slightly off to the left to allow the Joe to stay on that line. A common error when loading is to turn the hand over the top, exposing the elbow. This puts you in a position where your arm could be countered with Ikkyo Ura. It's incorrect. Raise the hand directly and draw the Joe back. There's no chance of being countered at all. In Oshiro Ski, we change the angle of the strike. This time we're going to strike at a partner behind us. We raise the hand up as though we're going to make Kaisha Ski and grab the Joe without turning the hand over. We turn the hips to allow the Joe to go horizontal before stepping back and making a thrust. Oshiro Ski is the only thrust or strike where you don't look directly at the target. You look at the corner of your eye. So you load up, turn the hip, look at the corner of the eye, step back and thrust. Again, not looking directly at the target. If we now reverse the angle, you'll see the load up more clearly. As the Joe is raised, the hip is pulled back off the line so the Joe doesn't move around at an angle. It can go straight and then straight into your target. As the Joe is loaded, it goes horizontal under your elbow. The hip is out of the way we can make a nice direct straight thrust. Don't look at the target, or just look out the corner of the eye as I mentioned earlier. Let's look at the loading and the hip turn again. So the correct way is to pull that hip out of the way to allow the strike to go through. So slowly, you'll see the hip turn as the Joe raises. If the hip doesn't turn, when you raise under your elbow, the Joe will stick out to the side. Then as you thrust, the Joe has to curve around to get back onto the line again. And this is incorrect. Pull the hips out of the way so that the Joe can be raised vertically into the position ready for the thrust. So imagine that there's no partner there, there's nobody lifting it. Just think of that lever action that you can see. That's the Joe moving on the one line. And this is what we're aiming for. We have to move the body out of the way to allow the Joe to make that shape.
In Ski Gay Dangesh, the fourth Josaburi, we change the start posture to Ski No Kamai. So we've already loaded into the ski position. We might need to be mindful of the back elbow, so don't have it sticking out. And also, you don't want it tucked in behind your side. That's going to restrict your movement. It's also going to bend your wrist and make it awkward. So it should be in line with the Joe to allow the Joe easily to move across the body. If we have a look at this angle here, we can see the movement. There's a gap between my body and the Joe. My hand can come through without brushing against my gi. This allows nice, smooth, easy motion. Ski gate engage is a three part move. So once we've made the ski or the thrust, we're going to draw the Joe back into a lower position, the Gaydan position. From here, we open the hip, step forward and strike an imaginary partner's knee. And that's the Geish part of the move. So let's look at that second part, that drawback. We're going to open the front hand slightly. I'm going to open it wide so you can see what I'm doing. Draw the Joe back and then regrip at the end, let go with the other hand, slide the Joe back. So one hand's going to go into the shoulder, you grip and put the other hand on your, on your hip. Then you can open your foot, step forward and strike your partner's knee. As we open the foot here, we turn the hip and the Joe starts to come off the body. So the body's turning to give extra power to the strike. And then the Joe comes away from your body before you step forward and strike. Your body will follow the strike. And you finish with your toes pointing forward, as you can see here. If we change the angle, you can see that as we draw the Joe back, it actually hides behind the body. So a partner would not be able to see that you had a weapon. This is also a good angle to demonstrate the strike. You can see it goes away from the body and it makes an arc and strikes down on and through to the knee. What it's not doing is just sweeping across the floor. Okay, it's not a broom, it's a joke. So it arcs over the top and strikes through the knee to create damage. final move in the series is Ski Jodan at Geishi Uchi. So again, it's another three part move. However, this time after the thrust, we make a high block into Jodan position. The Jo turns around and we make an Uchi or a strike. So we're familiar with the thrust. To make the high block, we ease the grip in the right hand and slide the hands together. Then we can raise directly above the head at this angle and step slightly offline. The Joe then helicopters around the head and the left hand comes off, takes the end of the Joe. And then as you step forward and strike, your right hand slides down slightly. So this time again, but we won't make it as obvious with the hands, they should stay in contact with the Joe. So the hands slide up and then they turn, the hand slides down the Joe to the end and then your right hand will slide down. So wherever possible, both hands are in full contact with the Joe at all times. One more time, we watch the, see the hands stay on the Joe. Both hands are in contact for as long as possible. The hands slide along the Joe to the end and your right hand slides down for the cut. Quite often you'll see beginners and they'll go from the block position and they'll reach the end of the Joe and then lock grip with both hands and that throws the shoulder forward when you cut. We should have the hand slid down so we get a nice flat finish. If we go from this angle, we can take a look at the block a little closer. So we can see that we can see through the hands. The hands are directly above the forehead. 
so the Joe can turn above the head before you step forward and strike. And again, you can see that shoulder being thrown forward because we didn't let the hand slide. This time we've got the opening and we turn and we let the hand slide into the correct position as the Joe goes horizontal. It's important to make sure that when you finish the strike, your hand is at the end of the Joe. If we race through, sometimes we can miss the end of the Joe uh, and we don't get maximum reach. So here we grab too early and there's still Joe and we've got to adjust the grip. So this is corrected earlier in the technique as we go here and reach to the very end of the Joe there. And then your hand will always be at the end of the Joe. So that's the end of this video. I hope you found it instructive and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.